Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial. Today we're going to talk about Nikola and why I think the stock isn't going to go to zero and why I've got very little doubt about it. I'd love to be corrected though, so let me know in the comments below what you think about this video at any point because I am going to say some things that are mildly controversial. So in this video, we're going to talk about the so-called zero emissions story of the hydrogen fuel cell and electric vehicle maker Nikola. And I'm going to talk more about why I said it's a so-called zero emissions company later. And I'm going to get deeply nerdy when I do. Um, there's going to be some technical stuff in there. Now, I don't have a position in this company and I'm not planning to initiate one ever. Uh, now, because this is the internet, however, I do need to say that the content of this video is not an endorsement or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any security and should not be construed as investment advice. Do your own due diligence, make your own investment decisions, and feel free to completely ignore everything that I have to say. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to keep me making videos like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, feel free to comment below on uh, what types of videos you would like me to make in the near future. All right, having said that, let's talk about why I'm convinced that Nikola can't deliver on its promises and will ultimately fail as an enterprise. Now, most of you who are watching this video are already interested in Nikola Motors and you know something about it. And if you do, feel free to skip ahead a little bit and I'll put the, you know, what time to skip ahead to up here while I recap a little of their history for those that don't know anything about them. Now, having announced ahead of time that I don't really see a future for this company, um, I, I'm certainly not unbiased here. I'm very biased, but I'm going to try and present the data and the story that I'm going to tell you in the most unbiased manner possible. And I'm not going to go over some of the controversies that Trevor Milton has spawned himself by, you know, by you know selling stock and using that to purchase certain things. I'm just going to go over kind of the facts as I know them, and I'll let you guys make your own decisions. Decisions, okay. Nikola was founded in 2014 in Salt Lake City by Trevor Milton, uh, a billionaire based on the valuation of Nikola today. He was a former CEO of D Hybrid Systems LLC, a natural gas storage technology company. Nikola has publicly announced a number of zero emissions vehicle designs concepts since 2014, and here are the designs that Nikola intends to produce. The Nikola One in 2016, Nikola unveiled this high-level design of a hydrogen fuel cell uh, Class 8 truck called the Nikola One. It was originally supposed to be in production by 2019, then it was delayed till 2020. The Nikola One design includes a 320 kilowatt per hour uh, EV battery supplying six traction electric motors with enough horsepower and torque to keep a speed of 65 miles per hour with a full load of 80,000 pounds on a 6% grade. Now the energy source is 300 kilowatt hydrogen fuel cells. The consumption is equivalent to 15.4 miles per gallon of diesel. Now the huge difference between this and the benefit uh, of, of using this over diesel is that this vehicle is not emitting diesel exhaust as waste. The products of a hydrogen fuel cell reaction are heat and water. This has long been something that, is, that has been considered attractive in the world of green technologies but making it economically viable has to date been pretty elusive. This hydrogen design was unveiled in December of 2016. And like I said, it was originally expected to be available by 2019, but as of 2020, it is still not in production. Next, we come to the Nikola 2. The company announced plans to build a hydrogen powered truck called the Nikola 2 with power and range estimates almost exactly uh, similar to those of the Nikola 1, but it comes without the sleeping compartment found in Nikola 1. The Nikola Tray, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. In, in November 2019, the company unveiled the Nikola Tray electric truck intended for the European, Australian, and Asian markets. Uh, the company says that the Tray will have 500 to 1,000 horsepower and a range of 310 to 745 miles. I think a lot of the consumer market is excited about the Nikola Badger. The Nikola Badger is a hybrid electric uh, pickup truck. Uh, a concept with a reported range of 600 miles. It uses a combination of hydrogen fuel cells and batteries. It was announced in June of 2020. And at uh, Nikola World this year, we're supposed to see this concept design in the form of a prototype, a working prototype. Nikola has a couple of other designs, including a, a, you know, one intended for the military and one intended for the waste management service. The fact that Nikola has thus far unveiled a few concept vehicles but so far, none of these vehicles appear to be in production or near production as of mid-2020. Now, that's not by itself a cause for alarm. Elon Musk's Tesla did not deliver its first car to the public for more than five years after its founding. 
And many people, like myself, were skeptical, skeptical of the claims that Elon Musk was making about the future of Tesla. You know, at, at least at that time, I was very, very skeptical. Trevor Milton, the executive chairman of Nikola Motors, much like Elon Musk, has made some bold claims about the capabilities of his new vehicles and has intimated that his claims are made possible by Nikola's breakthroughs in hydrogen fuel cell and battery technologies. People like myself were very skeptical of Elon Musk's claims, and so were a lot of Wall Street analysts at the time, and rightfully so. They were very bold claims indeed. Nikola's claims bear looking at, though, so let's do that. Let's go with the battery claims first. Back in November of 2019, Nikola claimed to have made a breakthrough in battery technology. They claimed to have a battery with energy density of uh, 500 watt hours per kilogram, about twice the energy, energy density of Tesla's batteries, and 40% of the weight. This new battery is supposed to last for 2,000 cycles and cost $50 to $70 per kilowatt hour. Nikola CEO Trevor Milton claims that this is the biggest, and I'm quoting him, this is the biggest advancement we have seen in the battery world. We're not talking about small improvements. We're talking about doubling the range of battery electric vehicles and hydrogen electric vehicles around the world. If this bold claim is true, it would really be an exciting and revolutionary development but so far, many energy storage engineers and scientists are skeptical. Nikola has not demonstrated this technology yet. They haven't demonstrated this battery as of yet. Nikola is scheduled to demonstrate the batteries and a few concept vehicles and a 2.3 megawatt hydrogen fueling station at Nikola World this year uh, just in December 2020. Hopefully, we'll get to see the batteries tested in a manner that confirms the claims that Nikola is making. But there are already a few worrying signs regarding the battery claims. Battery research goes on in a lot of companies and much like uh, any Game of Thrones novel, there's usually indications that foreshadow what's to come. And by that, I mean that we generally see some patents filed, uh, white papers published, or research reports published. As is the case with other EV makers, we should be able to see the development of some production facilities, battery production facilities, or at the very least, we should see Nikola using their money to acquire battery makers for their production capacity. We should also see new battery chemists across the industry recruited to the firm. But as of right now, we don't see any of that publicly. Now, it could be that everyone has signed an NDA and they take it very seriously. And that Nikola has a, an extremely disciplined workforce that doesn't gossip or talk to reporters. Folks, uh, the more you get to know me, the more you'll realize that I am not into conspiracy theories and I've worked in management for far too long to believe something like that. Let's just say that regarding the battery claims that Nikola is making, uh, I don't dismiss them out of hand. They are within the realm of possibility. I just think that when I'm looking at what other battery makers and what battery sciences and scientists and chemists are saying, they think that it's not likely that this breakthrough has actually been made at this time. Next, let's talk about Nikola's fuel cell claims. Uh, really, uh, it wasn't until recently that Nikola CEO Trevor Milton claimed to have made breakthroughs in hydrogen production, bringing down the cost by 81.25%. And he aims to get the cost down to between two and $3 per kilogram, which would make it competitive with diesel fuel. At this point right now, it's close to $16 per kilogram, anywhere from 14 to $16 per kilogram, which means that Nikola would instantly go out of business if they tried to sell these trucks to the public today with the infrastructure as it is. Once again, this is surprising. This claim is surprising to many hydrogen fuel cell specialists. This claim was also made somewhat suspiciously just after a rather thorough takedown of Nikola's business model by Kathy Wood from ARK Invest. Now, if you haven't seen the video of uh, Kathy Wood kind of taking apart the business model, I would highly encourage that you take a look at her interview on CNBC. It's available on YouTube and I'll leave a link in the description. Kathy Wood kind of perfectly lays out the challenges that Nikola is going to face going head to head with Tesla or with any other EV maker in the semi market. You know, she notes two things in her interview. First, that she and her team looked at cost declines for hydrogen vehicles and noted that the infrastructure costs for hydrogen fueling stations would be somewhere between 
five and 10 times more expensive than the in infrastructure for strictly electric vehicles. Each of Nikola's planned fueling stations would occupy seven to 10 acres of land with on-site hydrogen production equipment, storage tanks, and compressors. Each would also have a chilling facility for gas, which heats up when compressed and has to be cooled before it can be dispensed. There are supposedly 700 fueling stations planned in a network running from uh, you know, all over the US and through Canada, all planned to be built before 2028. As of today, there's only 48 uh, hydrogen fueling stations nationwide, and they don't look like the ones that Nikola is planning. And 43 of those 48 hydrogen fueling stations are located in California. The scale of the project that Nikola is talking about seems absolutely immense. Kathy Wood also noted that the cost of ownership for a Nikola Semi over the lifetime of a 700,000 mile lease would cost roughly three times that of a uh, Tesla Semi, largely because of the cost of hydrogen. It was shortly after this interview in which Kathy Wood really sort of picked apart and destroyed the business model of Nikola that the CEO Trevor Milton claimed to have made a breakthrough in hydrogen production that would bring the price down to a level that magically restores the viability of his business model and brings down the cost of Nikola as semi-truck ownership to a level that competes with the planned Tesla Semi. Curiously, he claims that this breakthrough is a result of standardization and economy of scale rather than the result of a new technology or chemical process. Not entirely unreasonable, but seemingly unlikely. And now when I say not entirely unreasonable, I'm thinking in, in percentages of less than one. You know, I, I really don't think that this is possible. Okay, folks, so now we're going to get kind of deep into the real nerdy stuff um, about Nikola and why I don't think it can work. Let me preface this next part of the video by saying that I'm just a math nerd and a science enthusiast. I am by no means a hydrogen production specialist, but uh, I do know math. Uh, I do know basic physics. There are some significant issues regarding hydrogen production that should be discussed and some additional concerns and costs that even Kathy Wood might have missed in her initial analysis that make the prospects of Nikola look even more dim. If you are an expert in the field of hydrogen production and I'm wrong about what I talk about in the next section, by all means, let me know in the comments below. I want any American company to succeed. I don't want anyone to fail. I would love the input of someone who's actually working on ways to improve the hydrogen production process and make it a viable competitor to diesel. Like I said, I'm just a science nerd. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really an expert in this. So if someone is an expert, please let me know. All right, remember when I said that Nikola is a so-called zero emissions vehicle maker? That was because most of the world's hydrogen, up to 95%, is produced from fossil fuels by steam reforming of natural gas, partial oxidation of methane, and coal gasification. These are also endothermic reactions, and if you don't know chemistry, that means that you have to apply heat, and in, in this case, extreme heat temperatures of 700 to 1000 degrees to get the reaction to proceed along and extreme pressures. And that energy has to come from somewhere and it's probably coming from the grid and the grid is powered by fossil fuels. If you look up here, I'm gonna post the steam methane reforming reaction. This is the chemical formula for it, uh, the, the chemical equation for it. If you take a look at it, it's a two step process. It's not till you get to the second step where you see what the waste products are of that process. And they are carbon dioxide and H2 molecules or hydrogen molecules. So not only is the process of creating the heat to, uh, to aid this endothermic reaction going to cause emissions of some sort, but the actual reaction, the steam methane reforming reaction and the subsequent water gas shipped reaction are going to cause carbon dioxide to be produced as well. And that has to go somewhere and it kind of throws their whole zero emission argument out the window. If we look at the partial oxidation method reaction, we're kind of looking at the same problem. The products at the end of the chain, at the end of the two-step uh, reaction process are carbon dioxide and hydrogen again, plus a small amount of heat. If we look at the final method, and the final method of three that counts for 95% of all hydrogen produced today, we're looking at waste products of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen uh, atoms, or hydrogen molecules, which is what you're looking for to begin with. Once again, these are two greenhouse gases that are gonna need to be dealt with in some way, otherwise you're not a zero emissions company. If you look at these chemical reactions, you'll note that in every case, they have a waste product of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. This is hardly an emissions-free process. So if Trevor Milton wants Nikola to be a zero emission vehicle company, as he claims, 
and he is going to reduce the cost of production by 81%, as he claims, it can't be using any of the methods that currently produce 95% of the world's hydrogen. It's going to have to be an alternative method. Now, luckily, there are a lot of exciting hydrogen production methods that are in development. High temperature water splitting, uh, using high temperatures generated by solar concentrators or nuclear reactors to drive chemical reactions that split water into hydrogen. But so far, we don't see that Nikola is involved in any of this. Uh, there's also photobiological water splitting. Microbes such as green algae consume water in the presence of sunlight and produce hydrogen as a byproduct. There's also photoelectrochemical water splitting. Photoelectrochemical systems produce hydrogen from water using special semiconductors and energy from sunlight. But there's not any evidence that Nikola is working on these methods. There's not any evidence that these methods are ready for primetime production. We don't know when they will be, and we can't begin to calculate the added cost to infrastructure if one or all of these methods were to be considered. So that really only leaves us with one other option. And that option is electrolysis, which is not a new method. It's not cheaper than the methods already used for the majority of hydrogen production. Now, you know, in electrolysis, an electric current splits water into hydrogen and oxygen with no greenhouse uh, gas waste products. So only if the electricity is also produced by renewable sources such as solar or wind will the resulting hydrogen be considered uh, renewable and zero emissions as well. But the electricity to power the on-site electrolyzers has to come from somewhere. Trevor Milton already has said that it will be coming from the local power grid where the stations are located, and he can negotiate long-term deals to get the cost per kilowatt hour from these local grids very cheaply. The problem with that logic is that if he can do that for Nikola through the same power grids, it can be done with Tesla as well, and this is one of the reasons why Nikola can't succeed in the long term. You know, just for argument's sake, let's say that all the energy used in the electrolysis process is derived from renewable resources just so we can ignore the zero emissions issue. You still have to deal with this very sad fact. And man, I kind of feel like I'm kicking Trevor Milton while he's down, but very roughly a new electrolysis plant today delivers energy efficiency of around 80%. That is the energy value of the hydrogen produced is about 80% of the electricity used to split the water molecule. It's an inherently uh, inefficient process. Pile on top of that, the fact that you lose efficiency in compression, liquefaction, and, and by a variety of other methods, fuel cell vehicles only generate power plant to car wheel efficiencies at the very best 35% and probably worse. In comparison, solar panel to wheel or windmill to wheel energy efficiency for a battery powered electric vehicle could be as high as 70%. I've seen some estimates as, you know, as high as 90%. I just don't believe those. I think that these are pretty obviously the huge reasons that Nikola cannot succeed. First, the basic laws of physics will prevent Nikola's pipe dreams from coming true. And you know, the, the nice thing about the laws of physics is that they are true no matter what you believe about Nikola's claims. Number two, to the consumer, the cost of ownership will simply be higher than a Tesla Semi because of the inherent inefficiency of the fuel cell vehicle. It's, you know, hydrogen is just going to cost more over the lifetime of that lease. Three, the infrastructure for hydrogen refueling and on-site production and storage does not exist and would have to be built at five to 10 times more expensive than the infrastructure for electric charging stations. Number four, I don't believe that there's been any real breakthroughs in hydrogen production that will lower the cost of uh, production by 81%. And reason number five, whether or not Nikola's claims about their batteries are true, don't really matter if the previous four reasons I gave you are true. For those reasons, I don't think that Nikola will be able to compete with Tesla at a guaranteed price of seven cents per kilowatt hour at the Tesla charging stations that they already claim to have negotiated in a number of places. They are both dependent on the same power from the same grid, except Tesla powers batteries directly and Nikola will use that to crack water for hydrogen production, which will then be used to power, power vehicle batteries. It's an inherently inefficient process. Additionally, if battery swapping or battery as a service is ever revisited by Tesla for its line of semis, I think that that's going to be the final nail in the coffin. The bottom line is Nikola is doomed. Uh, 
it's going to go to zero. And if you have money invested in it, I think you're probably going to lose it. All right, guys, these are just my thoughts. Let me know if you think I got the science wrong in the comments below or tell me how wrong I am about Nicola. I'll see you next time.